Good Friday morning, friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this last day of the work week. And I know some of you are thinking, did that preacher wear the same shirt every day this week? Well, I can tell you now, I, I re recorded all of these on Tuesday because on Wednesday I'm flying out to Kentucky for a funeral for my brother-in-law. Many of you already knew that, but uh, you know I don't like to advertise my being away uh, when Sonia's going to be home by herself. So anyway, that's why I've got the same shirt on. All of these are being recorded on Tuesday. Friday, I should be back home, but uh, I uh, figure I'll be sleeping at 9 o'clock. So anyway, I hope that you are ready for a great weekend. And I hope you have your Bibles, because we're going to pick up in verse 10 of Philippians chapter 4. Paul says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, and now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Now, keep in mind that Paul is an itinerant missionary. In other words, he travels from town to town, planting churches and leading people to faith in Christ. And he's a tent maker, so he, he sets up his business in each town and he begins to work. But understand, uh, with all of the things that he's doing, he's probably not able to support himself completely through his tent making. So he depended on the offerings of, of some of the churches. Now, some of the churches, he said, no, don't help. I don't want you to think that I'm going to uh, be uh, obligated to you. And I don't want you to think that I'm taking advantage of you. But after he moved on to another city, churches would then send offerings to him. That's what he's talking about here. He says, I, I'm rejoicing greatly because I know you care about me. I know there was a time when you, you couldn't uh, support me. You didn't have the opportunity, the means to do that. But he said, I'm rejoicing now because apparently they sent a gift to him and he is thanking them for that gift. But look at what he says in verse 11. He says, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Oh, listen. If you and I could get that into our hearts and minds, if the world could understand that, that whatever state we're in, that we are going to be content, if we're in a time of blessing, we're content, if we're in a time of persecution, we're, we're content, if we're in a time of whatever, that we're just content because we rest in the knowledge that we rest in the hand of God. And that he's got all of this. Not a, not a bit of this has surprised him. Not a bit of this has caught him off guard. And he is working his will in our lives and through our lives. And in that knowledge, we can find contentment. Now look what he says. He says, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Listen, that's the key. That's the key to, to true peace and contentment, is recognizing that whatever your situation, God has this. God is using this in your life to bless you, to guide you, to grow you, and to help other people. That's what Paul's talking about. He's not rejoicing in the fact that he's suffering. He's not rejoicing in the fact that he's having to, to, to be in jail. He's not rejoicing in the fact that he has been beaten or shipwrecked or all of those things. He's saying that I can have joy because I have the peace of God, because I am at peace with God, and because I know that the God of peace is with me. Listen, that is true contentment. That is true peace. That is true joy. That's why Paul could say he rejoices. Now let's finish this week on a strong note, because this is my favorite verse in all of the book. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, he's not talking about picking up a thousand pounds uh, of weight. No, that's not what he's talking He's talking about all the things that God has called him to do, all the things that God requires of him, all the things that God expects of him, all the things that God has led him to, he will lead him through because Christ gives him the strength to go through it. Christ gives him the strength to do it. Listen, friend, I want you to understand this morning that no matter what is happening in your life, no matter how bad things are, if you're a child of God, if you will turn to him in your moment of anxiety, in prayer and supplication, if you will trust in him, then he will give you the strength to endure, to survive, to thrive in the midst of all the things that happen. You may not think that you can, 
You may think this is the end of your world, but the Bible says God has promised that you can do it. Just trust Jesus to do it through you. I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday. God bless.